Generation Y, they're the ones in their mid-twenties. What do we know about them? This is a generation which already knows it's probably going to be working longer than its parents' generation its grandparents' generation. They want time in and they want time out. When do we take a sabbatical? Actually, how do we manage our aspirations for family life? They're the world's first joined up generation. And of course, technology has played a role in that. So whether they're educated in Mumbai or educated in uh, California, they're very likely to be remarkably similar in terms of what they want from work. There's a real emphasis on values, on purpose, on being authentic in this generation. This really, really matters to them. They want to really push their own creativity. They want to make great networks. Tips for 2030. It's about managing virtual teams. They're really difficult to manage. I think the corporations that really are able to do that will gain real competitive advantage. A tip I'd probably share uh, around Generation Y is that they are, they are great originators, they're great uh, ideas people. You can see them building and expanding and developing the whole time. As business, I think what we have to be able to do is rapidly deconstruct as well as construct. What we don't want is a business landscape in 10 or 15 years time, which is populated with the rotting hulks of businesses that have had their day, but we've not learned how to take them down, to cannibalize them and to quickly rebuild something in their place. We're now saying, okay, if people work virtually, what then does it mean to actually be face to face? It's a very precious resource. It's almost a new luxury good. And whether you're a member of Generation Y or you're an employer of Generation Y, whether your business depends on them for its future success, deciding how you're going to make space for FaceTime, invest in that and harvest all the power that there is in it, I think that's something very important for us all to consider. I think it's also about using technology to join up that wise crowd. You know, many companies have thousands of people around the world and yet they keep going back to the same people for their ideas. Wouldn't it be amazing to really tap into those broad networks of people? Well, guess what? Uh, new collaborative technology allows you to do that. So I'd like to see more companies really pushing for that one. Just one concern about that. We don't yet know whether this emphasis on crowdsourcing, this emphasis on peer solutions, which has so much power, whether it might also just crowd out the lone voice. Perhaps that lone voice doesn't get the attention it needs at the right moment, but that could have been the truly disruptive innovation, which is a leap forward in solving some business or societal challenge. And there's a question mark over that. People also want to develop themselves as humans. They want to be close to other people. And so I think the way that we build networks, both in terms of the broad, big ideas networks, but also in terms of the intimate, uh, regenerative networks, I think that's going to be very important for employees. And of course, very important for organizations as they support this network creation.